In this conversation, Linus Torvalds describes and discusses maintainer fatigue in the Linux open source community, highlighting many things and is definitely interesting as he talks to Dirk, who is the head of the open source program office at Verizon. Let's see what Linus's thoughts are on maintainer fatigue. But this is actually where I wanted to go next, because if you look at the top, if you look at the people uh, at, at the, at the sub-maintainer level, uh, most of them these days are either like Greg and have no hair, or wow. they are. <laughs> That's rough. Or they are like the two of us, and they have a very. It's not completely gray yet. Some people kid themselves that it's <laughs> gray yet. Others have accepted that. Yeah. But kidding aside, the the leadership, the what you call at the top of the maintainer tree, uh, we are certainly seeing a significant aging there. Obviously, as right. time goes by, that has to happen but if I if I look five years into the future and a lot of people will start hitting the 60s and the first ones will approach the 70s so where do you see this going this is a fantastic question by Dirk poised as what's going to happen to the future of open source and specifically the Linux kernel as a majority of the maintainers are going to be aged out so I mean it's a to some degree it's a good problem to have I mean so the kernel summit was what a month ago, something like that. Three weeks. Three weeks ago. And, and it was actually the first year when I personally reacted to the fact that, yes, <laughs> a lot of us are going gray. But at the same time, part of the reason really is the Maintainer Summit is we try to limit it to about 30 people or so. Of those 30 people, at least three of them had been around for more than 30 years. So they had been around since like the first year of Linux existing. And the fact that they are still around and still active and still end up coming to maintainer summits means that, yes, they are older and grayer, but it also means that we actually have a community where people do stick around. Which is a fantastic thing because you don't have a community if people don't tend to stick around. That is one of the things that people have argued in the past, whether or not the Linux community is not welcoming of new people. But you could also argue the fact that people who have been there for so long, wouldn't have remained there if it was, let's say, a toxic place to contribute code to. Uh, but that's a, that's a double-edged is, sword. Uh, absolutely. And, um, and it's, for example, uh, one of the things I liked about the Rust side mm -hmm. of the kernel was that there was one maintainer who was clearly much younger <laughs> than most of the maintainers, and that was the Rust maintainer. And, and uh, we can clearly see that certain areas in the kernel bring in more young people. We had a, in the maintainer, at the maintainer summit, we had this clear division between the, the file system people who were very careful and very staid, and they care deeply about their code being 100% correct, because if you have a bug in a file system, the data on your disk may be gone. So these people take themselves very seriously. And then you had the driver people who are a bit more, especially the GPU people seem to be like anything. And, and, and you did notice that the, on the driver side, you have a much easier time finding young people. And, and that is traditionally how we've grown a lot of maintainers, including, I mean, Greg with no hair. So this is an interesting insight uh, by Linus himself. There are clearly portions of the Linux open source community involving different subsystems where younger people tend to migrate to. But that's not to say that they don't move over to various other subsystems. For example, the file system, which Linus mentioned, there's going to be people who join the community trying to get started with something fresh and new and not necessarily caring about breaking things. But as they age, as they progress in their contributions, that doesn't stop them from moving to different subsystems is what I believe is trying to be said here. I apologize, Greg. You can, you can beat me up later. Uh, I mean, my, my forehead is getting larger every year, so what can I say? It's, it's not, long, not far away from me. Um, let's switch gears completely and talk about something else. So that is kind of the end of the conversation here when it comes to maintainers and maintainer fatigue. Of course, there's going to be challenges and stress associated with the role of a Linux kernel maintainer because you can already tell there's a difficulty finding maintainers, it requires large technical skills, but also a certain level of evaluation ability to their own code contributions. While many people contribute code, not many people stay around to become maintainers. 
as mentioned by some of the numbers given out. The commitment and ability to work collaboratively with others is really what drives people to stay. There's of course this broader issue of the Linux ecosystem, the open source community in general, to try to find solutions to help bring in more maintainers to eliminate this fatigue, whether or not that's exploring new technologies, including AI, including Rust, and much, much more. It is refreshing to see that Linus's thoughts on this is to welcome whatever technology or whoever wants to help. And that's the best that they can do at this point in the journey of Linux. Let me know what you think about contributors or maintainers of Linux. Do you think the open source contributors will fade away into the ether over the coming decades? Or is there going to be a shift in mentality to keep maintaining the kernel because we're getting better and better technologies and more and more people available who understand how to code? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.